Thank you to the organizers for the invitation to share the 2020 update of the Gilead HIV pipeline. There are three pillars of the HIV pipeline to simplify and improve treatment, to expand prevention, and to achieve cure. One important goal is to simplify and improve treatment for those living with HIV. Gilead aims to offer patients a broad range of dosing modalities with long acting ARV regimens and address the unmet medical needs of highly treatment experienced patients. Our novel first in class capsid inhibitor is being developed to meet both of these needs. Lenacapavir, formerly GS6207, is the first in class HIV capsid inhibitor. Capsid is a multimeric shell that is essential to viral replication. Lenacapavir disrupts proper capsid disassembly and nuclear transport prior to provirus integration. Post-integration, LEN prevents the props, proper encapsidation and assembly of mature capsids, leading to non-infectious virion-like particles. LEN is active against all HIV subtypes, HIV with resistance to all other drug classes, including maturation inhibitors, and is the backbone of our long-acting program. In the phase 1b study of single doses of lenacapavir administered subcutaneously, the viral load decrease at day 10 ranged from minus 1.3 log for the 20 milligram dose to greater than 2 logs at the 450 and 750 milligram doses. This magnitude of response is comparable to that of integrase inhibitors. In this study, there were no SAEs related to study drug. Most AEs were mild to moderate and there were no early discontinuations. The formulation of LEN was further optimized to a 300 milligram per mil dose. At a 900 milligram dose, LEN concentrations reached greater than six-fold above the protein-adjusted EC95 and maintained these levels out to six months. To increase exposure during the first month of dosing, an oral tablet has also been developed. The LEN 300 milligram oral tablet rapidly achieves concentrations above the target six-fold protein-adjusted EC95 with a half-life of approximately 12 days. There is significant accumulation with multiple doses and minimal food effect. This oral tablet can be used for PK loading, an oral lead-in for the Lenlock acting injectable, and for weekly oral therapy. Putting this all together, the administration of Len in the phase two, three trials is shown here. Len will be administered as 600 milligrams orally on days one and two, 300 milligrams on day eight, and then at day 15, 900 milligrams of LEN sub Q, followed by administration every six months. But what about resistance? In vitro dose escalation experiments showed resistance development of N72D followed by Q76H. In total, seven substitutions in capsid have been identified. Q67N has a six-fold resistance to LEN and has wild-type replication capacity. The other mutations had higher levels of resistance and lower infectivity. In the dose finding study, only Q67N was found to develop in patients and occurred at only the two lowest doses, both of which are much lower than the doses being studied in phase three. Based on its broad and potent activity against HIV with resistance to all other drug classes, FDA has granted LEN breakthrough therapy designation for the treatment of HIV infection in heavily treatment experienced patients with multidrug resistance in combination with other, other antiretroviral drugs. Of course, in people living with HIV, LEN should be used with other antiretrovirals and Gilead has a number of discovery programs committed to identifying appropriate partners for LEN, both for injectable two drug regimens and for weekly oral two and three drug regimens. The second pillar is to expand prevention. We aim to meet diverse needs of persons at risk of acquiring HIV using daily or long acting antiretrovirals. In this prevention space, we are expanding our clinical data on FTAP in women and initiating the study of lenacapavir sub-Q. The first study of lenacapavir or FTAF for PrEP in adolescents, girls, and young women at risk for HIV. Treatment arms are LEN sub Q every six months with either daily FTAF or FTDF placebo. The second arm is daily oral FTAF with LEN sub Q placebo every six months. 
And the third group is daily oral FTDF with LEN placebo. There are two primary endpoints at week 52 of LEN or FTAF versus background HIV incidence. The second study is in men and transgender women who have sex with men. Participants are randomized to LEN every six months or daily oral FTDF, each with a placebo, and the primary endpoint is at week 52 and is LEN versus background HIV incidence. The third pillar is to achieve cure, where we are focusing on latency reversal agents, immune modulators, anti-envelope antibodies, also known as broadly neutralizing antibodies, and therapeutic vaccines. The goal here is to identify a finite duration therapy that achieves durable art-free HIV remission without transmission or disease progression. There are two phases to this strategy, activation and reduction of the reservoir, and then control or eradication. Latency reversal agents have not translated well from preclinical models to humans, and there is room for further discovery here. Gilead has de been developing immune modulators to enhance the activation of immune cells using the TLR7 agonists, lefitolamod or vesitolamod. The reservoir may also be reduced using bro broadly neutralizing antibodies. In addition to antibodies, T cell mediated immunity is critical and this will be enhanced using therapeutic vaccines. Animal studies from a few years ago found that combination approaches were going to be needed to achieve cure. Here, studies in non-human primates use the TLR7 agonist vesitolamod with a broadly neutralizing antibody or with a therapeutic vaccine. With the BNAB, five of 11 monkeys had no rebound through 160 days. With the vaccine, there was a different phenotype where all animals rebounded and three of nine became controllers. At CROI this year, these double combinations were repeated and the triple combination of vesitolamod vaccine of AD26 with an MVA boost and the broadly neutralizing antibody PGT121 were presented by Dan Baruch. The schedule of administration of each agent is shown here. With no treatment, the SHIV infected monkeys all rebounded following ART discontinuation. One very important finding was that the previous studies of VES with PGT121 or vaccine were reproduced. VES with PGT121 had four of 12 monkeys controlling with no rebound due to low or no reservoir. This may be a reservoir killing strategy. VES with the AD26 MVA vaccine had all animals rebound, but then three of 12 controlled. This is inducing a state of functional cure. With the triple combination, there was a blend of phenotypes. Some animals did not rebound and others rebounded but then controlled. This effect seemed to be additive and in total six of 10 animals controlled their virus. This very exciting triple combination strategy is progressing into a clinical trial. I'd like to end with an overview of the rich Gilead HIV pipeline. To simplify and improve treatment, we are developing lenacapavir for highly treatment experienced patients, as well as for suppressed individuals. Also for highly treatment experienced patients, the unboosted protease inhibitor GS1156 is now in phase one. To find a partner for LEN, we have a number of preclinical programs spanning long acting integrase inhibitors, NNRTIs, NRTIs, and BNABs. For prevention, we are expanding our studies of FTAF and starting studies of LEN as a long acting agent. For cure, we are working on combination strategies that include immune modulators, vesitolamod and lefitolamod, broadly neutralizing antibodies, elipovimab, formerly GS9722, GS9723, and the BNABs acquired from Rockefeller, GS5423 and 2872. We are working with a number of vaccines, including a collaboration with ALIX to be used in combination with VES and early stage discovery vaccines with Hukipa. And with that, I would like to thank you for your attention.